So just like I enable the web endpoints just by defining the functions here and adding a dependency on the web project, I can do the same with uh, Spring Cloud Stream and integration with uh, an event broker like RabbitMQ. So what I can do is adding a dependency on Spring Cloud Stream binder Rabbit. So there are different binders depending on uh, um, the broker you want to integrate with. On the documentation, you can find uh, more information. So you have officially supported by uh, Spring, you have RabbitMQ, Kafka, Kafka Streams, but there are also other binders provided by the community and partners. So like Azure, Google, and Solace uh, Solutions, they are supported as well. In this case, I'm gonna use Rabbit. So starting from uh, uh, the previous uh, setup, just like functions declared as bins, I add this uh, new dependency now. Second step, I'll start a RabbitMQ container. I'm using the default port 5672. And I have also this other port, which is for administration. That's why I'm using the management version of RabbitMQ. And then once again, the functions are here. I'll keep the function definition. I need the definition also for a Spring Cloud Stream. And then I can start the application again and see what happens. So I haven't changed anything, not in the Java code, not even in the configuration. I just added a dependency on Spring Cloud Stream. So we're gonna see more logs now because Spring will uh, connect to uh, RabbitMQ and through auto configuration, set up everything we need in order to support uh, triggering that. Let's see what is happening. Um, so do we have a container running? Yes. We have spring bind of rabbit. Let's try again. So th there's not magic in this. Uh, Spring Cloud Stream is uh, leveraging all the nice features from uh, Spring integrations and uh, the project called Spring AMQP which is the one actually integrating with uh, RabbitMQ. It's just that you don't need to uh, be concerned with actually uh, integrating your code with uh, AMQP. Everything is done by Spring Cloud Stream. So let's see what is happening. Rabbit health check failed. So there's something wrong with Rabbit. Oh, create a new connection. Yeah. So there was something going on with RabbitMQ. Okay, but let's see, I'll uh, clean up the logs here. Let's see if uh, it's actually working. We have defined uppercase pipe reverse reactive. So if now I send a message with a string, I would expect to see uh, the result reversed. I'll use the reverse function here just because I think I have a log message in reverse so we can see the result. Yes. Perfect. And in the meantime, I'm going to open up localhost 15672. This is the RabbitMQ administration. By default, if you don't specify any credentials, it's just guest, guest. Here it is. See if the application started. Yes. Okay, the first thing to notice is that uh, by default, Spring Cloud Stream creates some exchanges and queues for us. 
the exchange has this naming here, uppercase reverse, which is the name of the function definition, then in or out, and then zero. Let me explain uh, what that means. So it's a, a function definition dash in or out dash zero. So the function definition is what we defined in the application gravity file. If it's uh, something with a pipe, we just uh, remove the pipe and use the final result as a name here. In out is uh, the input or output channel. So the input of the function definition and the output of the function definition. And then zero for RabbitMQ will always be zero, but if we use Kafka, you have the possibility of relying on the partitioning functionality offered by Kafka. In that case, each partition would have a different uh, index here, zero, one, two, three, but for RabbitMQ, it will always be zero. This is a logical name. So this is how Spring Cloud Stream identifies the input and output channels in the application. And if you don't specify anything else, it will use them also as uh, actual names for the exchanges here. And then it will create a queue for each consumer. We have only one consumer, which is the input of uppercase reverse here. And then there's a bunch of random strings. This is a, a temporary queue. Spring Cloud Stream will remove it when it's over. So clearly this setup is really nice for uh, demos, for, for trying it out, but it's not for production. But let's see if it works. So I'm accessing the exchange for the input channel. I can publish a message like Spring Cloud, message published. Let's see if it worked. And here it is, converting Spring Cloud. Let me zoom in. Converting Spring Cloud to uppercase and then reversing Spring Cloud. It worked. But again, like that naming is not really nice for a production scenario. We need, we need something else. So I'll stop the application and we'll see how to address that aspect. So depending on your uh, use case, these exchanges and queues are created either externally through some other option, or if you, they don't exist already, Spring Cloud Stream will uh, take care of it. But you're not uh, constrained using the standard naming. You can uh, configure the bindings and we can do that through the properties. We have the bindings here, yes. We address the bindings using the logical name. In our case is uppercase reverse in zero, which is the input of this composition. We can specify a name and we can specify a group. So if you remember, we had an auto-generated queue with some random strings. So instead of that random string, we want to use what is called a consumer group. A consumer group uh, means that all the instances of the application in that group uh, will uh, read the message only once. So only one of those instances will read the message. And this is, of course, what you want if you, for example, have your application replicated and only one of them needs to get the message. So we can have the definition. We can call it um, maybe plain string. And then we have a group, which is usually, usually for the group, I use the application name. Now it's just demo, so let's go with that. And then we have uppercase reverse out zero. In this case, I only specify the, the name, like processed string, because there's no consumer. So once I process the string, there's no consumer reading, so I don't need to specify uh, a consumer group. All these properties, of course, you can find them documented uh, on the Spring website, but you can also check the code for the binding properties here. So you can have uh, a look here. So there are uh, generic binding properties. 
but for RabbitMQ and for Kafka, of course, for all uh, for all the specific binders, you can find uh, extra properties. Uh, Rabbit binding properties. Let's see if I can find it. Yes. So with the Rabbit properties, you can specify uh, things like. Uh, for example, if a, a queue needs to be uh, transactional, so if you are saving a message in your queue as part of a transaction, which is usually the case if you're uh, using something like uh, the Saga pattern, where you save something in a database and at the same time you also want to send an event about what just happened, then you need to make sure that these two operations either both succeed or both of them uh, are rolled back and RabbitMQ support uh, supports transactions so you can uh, you can find the transacted properties and set it from here um, yeah uh, another uh, set of properties that is uh, uh, useful is about the DLQ the dead letter Q so you can specify the read delivery you can specify uh, really, everything you can just do it here from the application properties. So now, oh, this is wrong. This should be destination. So now we specified explicit names for the exchanges and the queues. Let's see what happens if I run it again. If you used Spring Cloud Stream uh, before, maybe some older version, you might remember that uh, back then you needed some extra annotation in your code. So you needed to specify annotations for the source, for the, uh, the processor, the destination, but now your code is really framework free. It's just the beans and the configuration. And then I used Lombok, but really, the function is just uh, framework free. And this is convenient because not only you can use functions in your code, so in your project, but you can also import functions from uh, other libraries, from jar files. And on the Spring Cloud Stream website, you can see, you can find already a, a library of different functions that might be useful uh, if you build your, uh, your own data pipeline. Let's have a look. Yes, so we have here the plain stream exchange and the processed string ex exchange, their topic exchange, and the queue. Now we have plain string dot demo. So this is not temporary. So this will uh, survive the application restart because I've been explicit in uh, what I wanted to use. So I can uh, give it a try uh, one more time. And here it is, converting to uppercase and reversing. So about RabbitMQ, uh, right now I'm relying on the auto configuration because I started the container using default values, but I can also customize that using the Rabbit properties here. Uh, yes. So for example, if it's not localhost, I can specify some other host. I have the port, if it's not a standard one, and a few more of, um, properties like the connection timeout. Yeah. Just by using Spring Cloud function and Spring Cloud stream, we have a lot of power in our hands. And as you noticed, it's it's almost transparent because after declaring functions as bins, it's only a matter of configuration and dependencies in here. And we can use both these projects, function and stream, as a basis to build uh, our own uh, uh, data pipeline.